and expect a Public Utilities Commission investigation into the Maui fires soon. That's what an energy expert says. KITV4's Diana Ko talked to a university lecturer about the policies that HECO had in place before the fire and what might possibly happen now. Preliminarily, the fingers point to uh, Maui Electric Equipment being the root cause of the fires. Is there any sort of uniform policy where lines have to be de-energized at a certain point or how are these decisions made? Well, that, that of course, is the, the big question. Hawaiian Electric has stated clearly that they do not have, they did not have, and likely do not have, a preventative power shutoff program slash policy in place. Mangelsdorf says HECO filed a docket with the PUC in June 2022 and listed its grid resiliency plan. Wildfire prevention and mitigation is ninth on the list. And yeah, yeah. if you look at where they're proposing to spend money, how much money they're proposing to spend, uh, wildfire prevention and mitigation is fifth on the list. Meaning there were higher priorities than wildfire prevention and mitigation. On the one hand, he says this is a state that would more likely see water damage from hurricanes and tsunami. On the other hand, he points to the massive damage from California wildfires, namely the Paradise Fire of 2018. Why didn't Hawaiian Electric have something in place? Burying lines below ground would eliminate the electrocution danger created by downed power wires and minimize outages during storms. But Mangeldorf says that's cost prohibitive. Is it hard to put a pole underground? What kind of uh, factors go into that kind of decision making? It's very expensive. Now he is certain the PUC will be investigating. Would it make sense for the PUC investigation to work in partnership with the state attorney's um, investigation? That's a good question. Marco Mangelsdorf, thank you so much for talking to us. He is a lecturer for energy politics at UCSC, University of California at Santa Cruz, and talking to us today from Hilo, where he resides. Diana Koch, KITV4 Island News.